Welcome to the Interesting Podcast episode number 153. This episode is with one of my all-time favorite actors and really one of my favorite people, Jeffrey Pierce. You may know him best as the author of the Reckoning series or as the man behind Tommy from The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2. He is awesome. We talk about his recent motorcycle rebuild, how he got into acting, how a little tough love taught him to be a professional, his writing process for The Anointed Angel Comes, recording and editing the audiobook himself, being nominated for a BAFTA Games Award, breaking down the character of Tommy, and so much more. He's fantastic. You're going to love him. So let's just jump right into it. Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, episode number 153, with Jeffrey Pierce. Theme song time. Yeah, things have gotten a little bit busier, which is nice and maybe a good sign of like normalcy finding its way back. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, at least we hope. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Fingers crossed. I, yeah. You know, it's funny. Since last we talked, it's shown me how much can happen in such a small period of time. Like, <laughs> I mean, you finished your second book. You built your yeah, bike. Yeah. You built a bridge. You got nominated <laughs> for a BAFTA. Yeah, for a BAFTA. How about that? Dude. It's oh, a, it's yeah, it was just a short amount of time. <laughs> well, it, you know, it was the build up to all those things that uh, that takes all the, the the time. It's like when things start sure. to tumble, it's it's uh, it, it feels like it took five minutes, but it yeah. really <laughs> took like you know, 15 years. Yeah, it's um, a good point. It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to revisit The Last of Us because the time between the performance capture and mm. the game release and then the sort of echoes of it is uh it's a very very long time so it doesn't sure. feel like it, it, there's not the sort of like in television if you come in and you shoot a guest star or you sure shoot a recurring role it's probably going on air about three and a half four weeks later oh sure but uh you know films is a lot longer than that mm -hmm. games it's a lot a lot a lot yeah. a lot longer <laughs> than that so it's easy to sort of lose connection to oh yeah we shot that stuff i i recall that that was uh that was a good time sure you're like i, but I did do that <laughs> uh i read an interesting thing today and i wish i had the name of the the uh the poet uh writer who talked about doing a movie in the 1960s that was considered a failure and oh. then uh 20 years later uh, 15 year old Guillermo del Toro oh. asked for the writer's <laughs> uh, autograph. And then 20 years after that is helping, you know, is, is reached out to to write a musical with him. And then Dude. Daft Punk also saw the oh. movie and is, you know, <laughs> and has brought this 70 year old writer in to collaborate on a piece that they're doing. And it just is, it, it's a good reminder that what you do uh, in the moment matters. And 100%. judging it as a failure or a success or a step on some sort of, you know, path that you expect to exist is, is a waste of time. Yeah. You know, yeah. you do the best you can and you hope for some results. And then, Absolutely. you know, and, and, and I think that in many ways, I had no idea that I was going to be even in the, in the mix for the BAFTA nomination. Sure. That just like showed up like somebody on Twitter was like, hey, congratulations. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful morning. Congratulations to me. Yeah. And then, you know, to, to come to find out, uh, I'm in some really, really uh, uh, excellent company. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a that was a good day and it was great to get the motorcycle built. Uh, How's that know, going? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It, yeah. it, it's uh, the first couple rides when you put it back together yourself. Or, yeah, <laughs> uh, a little bit a uh, test of like, courage oh shit what 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 does happen if yeah. the front end falls apart at 50 sure. miles an hour probably not good things right um, did it shake last but, time yeah i don't recall that high speed wobble what the fuck yeah. did i do um 
but I've done it enough times at this point that that I have uh, you know uh, enough false confidence to get on it and take it up to fifty and, and see what happens. There you go. Um, there you go. And uh, it gets to fifty and it's just nice and smooth. So very knock on wood. Happy yeah. with, uh, <laughs> with that. Um, you know, it's it's it, it's better than giving it to a mechanic and being like, well, I got to trust somebody who I don't really fucking yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, especially on motorcycles. Oh my god, it's so much more expensive. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, there's well, no way. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Uh, I mean, I've come to find that to stay sane in this business where you have very little control over outcome of anything. Good point. Uh, it's good to have things in your life that you can control 100%. Yeah. Um, and so working on motorcycles, working, building stuff around the house. These are sort of simple, concrete tasks that you either do them right and you know it's a, it's a successful thing, mm -hmm. or you do them wrong and you fuck it up <laughs> and you go back and you fix it, uh, which is like the, yeah. the glory of like manual labor is like you either mm -hmm. did it right or you didn't. There's no like, well, yep. he, was, he was excellent. It was a great audition, but yeah. we're not giving him the part. <laughs> There's no um, interpretation with yeah, floors. You, exactly. <laughs> or, or motorcycles at 50 miles an hour. You either yeah, did right. it right or you did not. Uh, and you'll either have the opportunity to fix it or you will not. And that is, yeah. uh, you know, it's important to sort of, uh, I think, keep a balance in your life uh, on what you can control and what you can't. And yeah. usually you are the only thing that you have any actual control over. Um, yeah. And in my case, I'm literally the balance. You Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. You have balance. <laughs> You in know? your life and bringing balance to mine that's this is what this is the service that i provide <laughs> <laughs> it's good Thank somebody's got to do it you know yeah <laughs> did you grow up riding yeah yeah mm -hmm. i i got uh, a secondhand vespa scooter when i was nice uh 15 get it and uh and it was great uh ran around with all the 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 ska kids in in washington oh, dc and 1986 sure, sure. <laughs> and didn't and didn't die um <laughs> and then i got the my first motorcycle when i was 18 uh, nice. uh, uh 1973 bmw today that makes sense i'm seeing yeah. a thread seeing a yeah. thread and then i got a 1964 bmw uh, after that which if you have an old motorcycle never sell it don't yeah. ever sell it you know i was I, I i got to los angeles and i got hit by a cab Oh no! And, welcome, <laughs> yeah, welcome to welcome to LA. Um, and and I, I, and I, so I had this beautiful 1964 BMW that I had restored uh, lovingly uh, to the best of my ability. Sure. And uh, and it was dinged up and beat up, and I was flat broke. And I got a small, you know, check uh, for like fifteen hundred dollars from the taxi company. There you and, go. Uh, uh, and I sold the motorcycle and that's how Ooh. I was able to afford my first apartment in Los Angeles. So it was a fair trade. That's like, true. It was that's either fair. like I could be homeless with my <laughs> yeah. motorcycle or yeah. I can not have a motorcycle and not get hit by any more taxi cabs. And I can you know, actually embark on having a career. And I also bought a, a, a I bought a car from a friend for for five hundred dollars of that Boom. Uh, you know, the three grand I got for that motorcycle. That, but that motorcycle was, or, yeah, the motorcycle is worth like. I don't know, five times that at this oh, point. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I, I love the bike I have now. It's good. It's, it's good. nice. It's really nice. I, I rode a Honda Rebel and I, I love, mm, those, oh, yeah. I love those styles of bikes, the bobbers. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's the way to go. It's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, they're doing some really interesting, uh, like uh, taking 70s and 80s BMWs and turning them into bobbers and yeah. cafe racers. And I think, oh, that would be a fun project to take on. So maybe that's, Maybe that's next summer. We'll see. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I also, the fact that you started riding bikes so young, because at the time I know you started uh, in high school with the yeah. whole acting gig and then you mm -hmm. toured. So I'm picturing a young Jeffrey Pierce showing up on a motorcycle to be Romeo. And it makes sense to me. Well, uh, let's see. Yes, I, I did. I did have the bike down there. I had the scooter. I played like Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet. Oh, and then showed even up better. There. Yeah, <laughs> that was on the Vespa. Yeah, oh yeah. And then I, I traded up. Uh, <laughs> Romeo doesn't right after that. Romeo doesn't ride scooters. Tybalt does. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite work that. Probably yeah. vice versa. Real, yeah, true. In Italy, you know. <laughs> That's true. Romeo on a little yeah. Vespa. 
<laughs> it's canon now. Yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. Actually, since we last chatted, I, you inspired me to get back into Shakespeare. You did. Oh, good. You did. Cool. A, a buddy of mine who went to drama school. I was like, hey, listen. So I talked to this guy who did Shakespeare, and I was like, I haven't, t- I haven't looked at Shakespeare since high school. Maybe I should try again. And yeah. we've been, we've been dissecting Hamlet's soliloquy. And I, <laughs> nice. I forgot how difficult it was. You, you, you got me comfortable. And then I was like, oh, it'll be like old hat. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> no it, 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 it takes uh, you got to dig and it's, you know, always better read aloud than it is read uh-huh. silent. I mean, it, it really is not meant to sort of be a, a reading, uh, uh, put me to sleep every time to read yeah. it uh, aloud, <laughs> unless I'm reading it aloud. Sure. Um, but yeah, it is. A, it's an incredible investigation. It's a time when language actually was alive. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's so specific you know. as well. That's the crazy yeah. thing I'm remembering. I was like, there's none of this is wasted. Like capitalization is there for a reason. You're like, oh, wow, this is yeah. wild. Yeah, he, so he was directing his actors through the way he spelled the words. That's um, so nuts. Yeah, it is. A, you know, he knew exactly how he wanted it to sound, how he wanted it to feel, where he wanted a breath, where he wanted a pause, where he wanted, you know, yeah. you know subtext to play out. It's, a, you know, an impressive amount of work that just sort of gets, I don't know, turns into this uh, relic. It, it ceases to be alive, I think, most of the time when kids get presented it in school. Oh, yeah. And no wonder they think it's boring and sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> then, so then what, what was it that drew you to it? Because you were one of those, like, kids on a, on a higher half. Uh, I, I, was, I was lucky. I had, a, I had a teacher in sixth grade, and she... Uh, she put on a play, uh, you know, a sort of like a cut down version of a Shakespeare play oh, cool. every year. And it's sort of like as the ending uh, sort of celebration of the English language at the end of sixth grade. Sure. Perfect. And uh, and I <laughs> I knew that I wanted to either be Harrison Ford uh, right. or I wanted to be uh, uh, a, a professional uh, fencer. I wanted to, to, oh. to be an Olympic fencer. That was Same thing. my dream. My dream in sixth grade. <laughs> hey, you know. I see another Tibble thread. <laughs> exactly. You know, I got to do all the fun stuff and not ever actually get stabbed. There you um, go. <laughs> and so she cast me. I got, I, I booked one of the, the Antiphilus of Syracuse, one of the leads oh, in the play. Sweet. And I loved it. And I loved being in front of the audience. And I was like, all right, well, I guess it, uh, I'll try and figure out how to be Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the easier of the two, really. <laughs> well, well, maybe. <laughs> I, at the time, I had started taking, you know, this is 19... A long time ago. I don't yep. even know what year it would have been. <laughs> Way back in the um, 1900s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The 19, back in the 1900s. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I would take the, the, the metro in mm-hmm. from uh, Arlington into Washington, D.C. Uh, to alone. Uh, of <laughs> As course. like a sixth grader. So I'm like <laughs> ten, 10 years <laughs> old. Child. <laughs> taking, taking the metro alone into Washington, D.C. into not a great neighborhood to, to study fencing. And it was cool. It was awesome. Yeah. And the guy was like, look, you know, like the teacher's like, if you stick at this, you can be a champion. Like you're at 10 years old. Like, yeah, if you put in the work at 10 years old, you can be a champion fencer. And I was like, that sounds awesome. But Done. boy, this is a lot of hard work. Yeah. Uh, and then I got the, the book to play and rehearsal coincided with it. So I had to choose and I chose acting. Mm. Yeah. Not a bad choice. <laughs> Not a bad choice. No, it's, it's been good. <laughs> it's been good. You don't see a lot of fencers getting like, a big contract. Yeah, that's true. Definitely <laughs> needed a side gig yeah. even more than I, I did as an actor. So yeah, it all worked out well. Not bad. Not bad. So you, wow. Yeah. You, so you started so young then. So by the time you're touring, I mean, you've been doing it for a little while. Yeah. I mean, I got sidetracked by a lot of uh, drugs and alcohol as a of course. teenager. Of course. Um, and what else are you uh, do? Yeah, you, be a lot of that stuff. Come on. Uh, <laughs> It's a, so I barely made it out of high school, uh, Same. but the one thing that kept me going to high school was that I was, you know, on the other side of who I was, I was doing plays. Um, and so I had to strike a balance between the abuse that I was doing to myself mm-hmm. and being able to be in plays. And the one thing that kept me going forward and kept me from getting into real, real trouble was, uh, was that I, I felt like I couldn't do that and do the plays at the same time and i was lucky to get all of that out of my system by the time i was 18 or 19 um 
Perfect. for the most for yeah. the most part. <laughs> That's right. Um, still plenty of self-destruction yet to come. Yeah, of course. But, There's uh, time. Plenty of but time. In, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but 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 the real sort of uh, 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 you know that that chapter, I was able to, to to close it because all of a sudden I was working professionally, and there right. were different understandings of what was acceptable. Uh, sure. And it it maintained you know that I. <laughs> So I'm, I'm doing Shakespeare and I, it's great. And I love this job. And every day I think I'm getting paid, uh, you know, well, a couple hundred dollars a week. But to me, that was real yeah. money at the time sure. like, to do what I love to do. And, and how many people in the world get to say that they're getting any sort of financial exchange to do only what they love? So we're traveling the country and we're going into uh, uh, universities and colleges that never would have accepted me as a student. And I'm teaching, <laughs> you know, classes in stage combat and, sure. you know, and breaking down Shakespearean verse to, to, to yeah. you know, <laughs> third and fourth year students. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I was still sort of haunted by my own sort of self-destructive desires. Mm -hmm. And the thing that uh, really turned it for me was I, I we got back we came back to dc and we were performing at the shakespeare theater at the folger which if you grow Ooh. up as an you know as an actor in the dc area the shakespeare theater when they were at the folger was just like you know tops. that was that was the tops yeah so we did a three-week residency there and i got together with some friends from high school and i showed up hungover on <laughs> sunday for a two o'clock matinee i mean like <laughs> brutally hung over no. and uh and I, you know I'm, i was playing theseus so he's not oh. the lead but he has sure. the most words to say in the right. whole play <laughs> like at the beginning he talks a lot and at the end of the play he talks a lot Perfect. and i yeah so i i suffered through that and the audience suffered through it and yeah. my castmates <laughs> suffered through it and the managing director who's still uh uh very dear to me took me aside afterwards and he said i don't care where the fuck we are mm. i don't care what your excuse is if you ever do that to me in this company again i will take you to the nearest greyhound bus station and drop you off and you will have to make your own fucking way home yeah and it was this sort of uh it was done with love, but there was no question that the repercussion would be real and immediate and mm -hmm. the consequences would be real. And I have never in the process of my career uh, had a drink the night before going to work ever. It worked. Like, Ever, I mean, it just uh, the, it was a there were clear consequences. I had an understanding that that I was going to pay a price if I did it, and and it was the greatest lesson that I've ever gotten. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was uh, uh, probably one of the best things that that came out of that experience was I learned how to be a professional. I right. learned how to uh, to uh, recognize what I loved more than booze or you know sure what what have you yeah <laughs> just a readjustment of priorities which hey tough love works yeah. sometimes well it, it tough work tough love works every time yeah, right. I, I mean I I, I I agree for just personally i have a hard time seeing anywhere in my process of existence <laughs> where the lesson didn't hurt and if the, sure and i'm not talking about you know like take a beating from my parents right, yeah <laughs> i'm talking about like life gives you consequences for the choices that you make and you either pay attention to those consequences mm -hmm. or you do not mm -hmm. um but without sort of like you know life leaving a sting with the lesson you burn your hand on the stove then you, you do, you're probably not going to try and put your hand on a hot stove twice yeah um and that is apparently how i I've yeah, right. learned my lessons. <laughs> I I have not been hit by a taxi cab again. That's true. Um, <laughs> That's true. I, there's there's the thread. When you when you have tougher skin, it takes a little more force to get through. I get. Yeah, it. or you know, harder. You know, harder skull. Yeah, there uh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I was talking to a friend of mine, whose son is uh, an elite level uh, athlete. Oh, cool. And his 
you know, as a teenager, like, you know, discovered that he had this gift yeah, yeah. and then started competing against kids who were the same uh, quality and same level of talent, mm -hmm. uh, but stronger and bigger and got, you know, playing hockey and got his, his back Oof. broken. Oh, um, God. and then had to had to rehab and yeah. and my my buddy is telling me he's like look, you know so i sat down with him said look here's what we can do we can get you a trainer get you into a gym you can put on you know you can recover from this injury come back stronger and just know that the lesson is that the kids you're going to be playing against are doing you know putting in all the work so you should put in all the work too sure and the son's like meh maybe dad we'll see <laughs> What did and, your friend do? <laughs> I remember I was like, you yeah. don't want to choke him because you're like, I am trying to help you. And then you realize people can't be taught. They have no. to learn their own way. And so yeah. he rehabbed and he went back on the ice and he got his back broken again. Worse. <laughs> and now no. he's taking, now he's like, you know, paying his what? attention. Now he's learned the lesson and he's, you know, on the path, but could have saved himself two years by just saying, you know what, pop? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to embrace your wisdom and run with it. But I'm, uh, you know, I don't know that I ever learned anything that way. Yeah, um, experience is the teacher, you know. Always. Oh, I've. I don't think I've ever even heard of anyone breaking their back twice. That's well, it's not. Wild. He didn't break his spine. He broke, I guess, like the transverse process that but comes still, off of the. Ow. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, oh. terrible, incredibly painful, no, and like <laughs> six months of you know brutal rehab and then you got to start at zero again yeah right <laughs> no thank you once is, yeah once would be enough but hey Hard apparently pass. apparently not apparently not <laughs> it, it's you know having a thick skull though probably came in handy when you moved to la because everything's about persistence and not giving up and like just it, sometimes just being bullheaded to keep going yeah i i think that it's interesting because i find myself again in a position that you begin in in Los Angeles, where you have to advocate for yourself. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and it is, uh, I think, my least favorite thing to do in the process, because you're trying to say to people, "I have worth." Yeah, you know? yeah, and it, and it embarrasses me that I have to show you, yeah, yeah, yeah. prove to you that I have worth. Same. But that is the journey. You you are constantly going to be trying to prove that to people or, or alleviate them of having to have faith mm -hmm. because faith is kind of uh, without the sort of deeds behind it. Yeah. Uh, and the proof of it, no one can just sort of have, Oh, this person is going to be great to have on set until they show up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> You know, it's like, it's, yeah, <laughs> it is that you want to be able to have faith. And so, you know, I find myself on a constant sort of journey of having to go back into that place. And maybe that's just my own sort of hard headedness. I want to just sort of be, you know, this is who I am. It's like, you know, do some sure. due diligence, make a couple of phone calls. You, you'll hear good reports on me, but that's just not the way the world works. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to have faith and you have to have persistence and you have to be willing to say, I have worth and I put in the work to have worth and, you know, and then yeah. you make that known to people. I mean, that is the process. I guess that's marketing in general. Yeah, that's um, true. And I have to do that shit with the books as well in terms of it takes a lot of energy to sit down and start a book from an unproven author. I bet. I mean, it takes me energy to be like, oh, I've never heard of this writer. Should, should I, should I yeah. indulge? Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the, the, the past year has been an interesting time because I couldn't go out and promote the book. Right. Um, you know, I had all these sort of uh, uh, great ideas to do a, a big art show in Los Angeles and bring in everybody that I know from the industry and all my friends who were actors and do sort of red carpet and do a, uh, a showing of all of the incredible art that my friend Jai Mitchell yeah. did for the chapters. Sure. Um, it's beautiful work. And so it I is. thought do an art gallery thing, do like an opening for the art gallery. And then, you know, everybody comes and gives a donation to this art therapy group. And in exchange, oh, cool. they get a signed lithograph and a signed book. And then I'll do like a, you know, 15, 20 minute reading from the opening of the book. 
and then everybody drinks champagne and 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 Boom. looks at the artwork and goes about their business. Right. Well, co- COVID. Uh, <laughs> it's a good COVID, idea. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's get hundred. Let's get a couple hundred yeah. of your closest friends into one room. That's yeah, right. They, Take them all they'll out. They'll be they'll be happy about that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So that was scuttled. Yeah. Uh, and then you're like, okay, well, the book's coming out, and how mm-hmm. do I get anyone to pay attention to it? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, you know, so I've been able to 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 talk about it on Twitter and Facebook and and do what I can. But it, it's it is really pushing a rock uphill. Yeah, I um, bet. I bet. So it takes that same sort of like, you know, in that process, <laughs> I had to write the second book. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm going to write a second book with no certainty that anybody's going to read the first one. Right. Right. And go through that process and go through the, the hell of doing the audio book and engineering uh-huh. it. Yeah. Um, which is uh, they, they don't pay audio engineers nearly enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, they should pay them whatever they ask for because it's a, a brutal process. Yep. Uh, yep. And so, yeah, so that finished the second book. Um, still really no clear picture of how I'm going to market it. Um, sure. But yeah, and started on the third book. Uh, and oh, so yeah? that is, uh, yeah, because yeah, probably best. Yeah, at some point, I got to have all five books written. So <laughs> might as well just get it, get through it. Yeah, just, just do keep it. Keep moving. Um, yeah. And, and just sort of have faith in the process that if I do the best that I can, it'll be the best that it can be. If yeah. it's the best that it can be and finds an audience, Hooray for me. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, um, it's an incredibly healthy process to go through. It's a painful yeah. process. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh huh. But in terms of taking a focus and a discipline and a persistence and all of the things that life takes in general, it's a great sort of testing ground for all those things. Yeah. And I, I like that you're the type of person who still does it. It's like knowing all those things. You're like, well, I still have to do it and do it well. But yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it, that's what matters, really, because if you do your best, you can't do better than your best. So you can't walk away yeah. from it, man. I could have done better. You're like, no, you couldn't have because you did. your yeah. best. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it is. Uh, I mean, I think that that is. That, that certainly is this has been a, a buoy over the past 15 months of this sort of journey. Oh, yeah. Um, it's good to have a place where you can go to and say, look, I have complete control in this space Mm -hmm. Um, because everything else is, is beyond any control that you have. Yeah. Yeah. And as an actor as well, talking back on the thing, you need things that you can control. Sometimes it's like, it's so nice to have something and a book is that's you, man. That's all you. (laughs) Doing the audio book too has been uh, uh, an incredible process of, of learning things that I didn't, know how to do or didn't know that I necessarily could do or had never been uh part of the things that I have had to do to stay employed so all Mm -hmm. the you know doing the best that I can (laughs) with all of those accents (laughs) and all of those characters and all of those different sort of voices and trying just to do it as well as I possibly can has has been uh has been great and healthy and good for my (laughs) self-esteem yeah yeah ultimately i don't know what this sort of you know there's been some very positive feedback mm-hmm. um right uh, no one has been like these accents are the worst accents i have ever heard in my entire yeah. life <laughs> you know it's just like yeah um uh, uh you know i that, that i've had to sort of play within myself in terms of what i can achieve and i'm very mm-hmm. happy ultimately with what i've been able to to uh to do on that front i'm happy Good. with the way it sounds i listen to it and i'm like that doesn't even sound like me at all it doesn't um which it, is a a cool sort of you know uh, uh experience as an actor to be like that is just like i'm channeling stuff mm-hmm. um and that's, that's like wild. when when writing is that it's you know when you're like in the flow of writing yeah you are just fe- sort of like a vessel for the subconscious just to sort of pour out all these uh uh insane ideas and then you make sense of them in the editing process right Um, right yeah so it's been nuts it's been good it's kept me kept kept me on an even key yeah (laughs) (laughs) it blows my mind because that's something like when people talk about doing audiobooks a lot of times it's like all right you go to the studio you record your thing you did everything 
Like you recorded yourself, you edited yourself, you send it like, that's wild. And yeah, it's good. It, it's really good. I've listened to it <laughs> twice now. And the whole time I'm like, he's just flexing. He can do all these <laughs> accents and they're all really good. And the story's great. And the writing is really gross, but like in a good way. There's, yeah, the, yeah. Like, there's a specific <laughs> sentence that was in the first book where you said it was about like a fly finding purchase on a cheek. Mm. And mm. I'm haunted <laughs> by it since. I'm like, what a gross way to say that. But it perfectly paints the picture of like, what is finding, <laughs> finding per- <laughs> well, Ter- it, terrifying. Yeah, that, that's a, that is a section that I wrote. It was one of the first things that I wrote for the novel. Um, because I wanted to, it's like, that's like probably chapter, like a quarter of the way into chapter one, I want to say. Yep. Um, I wrote that in a hotel room in Massachusetts while I was shooting Castle Rock. Oh, perfect. And uh, yeah, and I'd been reading a lot of Stephen King in, you know, all the sort of uh, uh, Alan Pangborn uh, novels mm-hmm. to sort of get a sense for that character and, and get a feel for what king was after with with the with that with that role mm-hmm. um and so that and i was you know i <laughs> they kept saying like look we 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 want to hold you we don't know we, your next day is pushed but we just want to hold you at the hotel uh oh. is that cool and i was like yeah you know fine cool it ended up being like 16 days in a row <laughs> that i was in a hotel in in massachusetts which it's not terrible and it was like no, beautiful area. Are perfect it, yeah it was it was it was uh, it was good and it was good for writing like you know at a certain yeah. point i could only go to the gym and walk you know the neighborhoods and you know so many times before i like oh i just gotta sit down and face whether i'm gonna write this book or not right and so that whole sort of processes came out of like I was for, forced to find something creative to embark on and I'd been thinking mm-hmm. about the book for a long time and I knew that I needed to sort of set the terrain of what a battlefield in World War One looks and feels and smells like and the fly be, just like yeah was an impulse I was like what what takes this journey what's going to take us there what sort of like sound and feel and visuals can I present so that somebody who knows nothing about the first world war can mm-hmm. know what it would have smelled like and felt like to be there and so that yeah. was that was where that came from you did a good job yeah. it's just yeah. that and also you created one of the most terrifying characters ever in the little man i still mm. i don't like i don't like thinking about it i don't like thinking about it a little boy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And like jeffrey what's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> He, he comes back. He comes back in book two. Oh, oh man. Yeah. It's, just, it's great. But it's one of those things. It's a book that really sticks with you. And the audio book, <laughs> I'm a big fan of if the author reads the book, I will always get the audio book because mm. I like to hear the intent and I like to hear what the author yeah. was thinking. And I'm like, oh, because I'm going to read it and I'll envision it my way. But I want you to tell me your story if I have the option. And yeah. so many accents, so many things. It's it's a, I get tired just thinking about what you probably went through to make this happen. And there's going to be five, which is <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, the, I'm really, the second book is, I think it, that, that I'm really sort of finding my own way in the craft. So mm-hmm. that, that I think that the second book is a step up as it should be on the oh, first cool. one. Cool. Um, oh no. And, uh, but, but, it, but if, you know, like I take, risks by having i don't know six or seven protagonists yeah uh and someone asked me about that once and i just said you know look it's important to me that i create this world that that in some ways you can choose your own protagonist yeah that as you're reading and experiencing it you can pick the person that you feel is is uh is on the journey that is most appealing to you mm-hmm. and that can be your protagonist and they may end up getting killed yeah uh, and they may end up being not who you think they are but mm-hmm. i wanted to be able to create something that was fleshed enough out that there were not sort of uh, that, that even the side characters could feel like they had a real life and a real existence that if that life and existence was lost uh, that the audience would would uh experience that emotionally or yeah or with, with a or shock anything sure. so, you know to have a reaction when when uh when a loss occurs uh 
Sure. So that's been an interesting process, but it's risky because like percentage of the audience is going to be like, I only like this one character. Yeah. If he kills this one character. I'm done. Right. Um, or why are we focusing on, you know, someone that is not as important to me? So it, it, it is, uh, it, it comes like from, I did a TV series with David Milch in mm. 2001 called Big Apple. And it was right. the best experience of my entire life. And it was so short lived. And that's it, how it works. Should, it should have been uh, 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 incredibly, it was, it was critically amazing. And if you can watch Big Apple, I'm mm -hmm. sure that it's out there somewhere on a platform because they like change it so that the eight episodes had a sort of like a closed ending. But it's Ed O'Neill and Michael Madsen and oh, Titus dude. Welliver uh, and, and uh, Donnie Jeffrey Wahlberg Pierce. and Jeffrey Pierce, <laughs> Henry Winkler. Uh, and wow. I mean, it is uh, 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 Glenn Turman, you know, who, who yeah, plays yeah. the piano player in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Like it was the most incredible wow. cast that I was just like, oh, I can't believe they <laughs> it's Strith Theron. Like it's like, I'm going to work with these people. Yeah. Uh, you burn too and, bright. <laughs> but but what what David Milch uh, it, it did it, it there were there were behind the scenes things that that uh, that could not be controlled in terms of executives battling for power that had nothing to do with what we were trying to do. Of course. Um, and uh, and David Milch at the time had you know I mean the guy is phenomenal and uh, Deadwood was the thing that he did next and he talked oh. to me about. Uh, he said, I, I talked about writing to him because I mm -hmm. had done some writing at that point. And his suggestion to me was like, look, study Flannery O'Connor. Uh, nice. If you want to understand sort of story and sort of short story, uh, take a look at her work. And it's amazing writing. Like she gets mm -hmm. into the minds and bodies and psyches of every gender and race that you can imagine. And does this incredible storytelling and it's very dark sure um i think maybe darker than what i write but oh boy darker in just sort of like she has an understanding of the human experience uh mm -hmm. that is so uh extraordinary for for someone who was her age when she was doing that writing mm -hmm. um but it influenced how i want to tell story like trying to use a short story form to tell long form narrative is uh as much fun as I could possibly have as a writer because I can go cool. anywhere, yeah, anywhere true. in history, anywhere in time, anywhere in, you know, the, the sort of human journey with this kind of storytelling, mm -hmm. because that is at the, the root of it. Um, but then that necessitates being able to do uh, the best that I can to create all these characters fully in the, in the booth. Um, yeah. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been a good process and, and, yeah, only two and three quarters books left to go. Huh. Huh. I, I will say my favorite character is the bar woman that tells the Pandora's box story. Oh, yeah, she's great. My she comes back to oh, thank she's God. Back. I was about to say, don't you hurt her, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's capable of uh, inflicting more damage than, than Good. could be inflicted on her, I think. I like her a lot. <laughs> she's my favorite out of all of them, and, which is saying a lot because I do really like all the characters genuinely. And I do like that you bounced because it, it created a fuller world. It was like, all right, now mm. we're going to move to this part of the world that's also affected by this whole thing. And yeah, I, I liked it. I like the scope. I dug it. Cool, man. Well, I, I look forward to seeing what you think of the second one. I'll be really mean about it just to knock you down. Be like, the first that's one was, fine. I was too nice about the first one. I got to I gotta bring you down. It's just I, how this you works. Know, you, if you believe the good, you have to believe the bad. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to like take the good reviews to heart, yeah. then you have to take the bad reviews to heart. That's, I had an older actor told me told that to me early on. Like, if they tell you you're great and you believe them, when they tell you you suck, you better believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have to like hold on to that middle ground, which is there's some truth in that middle ground somewhere. Sure, um, sure. And so yeah, I've had that, I have tried to rely on that to stay sane uh, in the face of any sort of you know positive feedback or negative criticism. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, <laughs> find hey, the truth in either. That's right, and you you can't argue with the BAFTA nomination. You just can't, Jeffrey. I was uh, shocked by that. I mean, like, I, I'm I'm proud of that work. Good, uh, for sure. Uh, I, I, but you know, just sort of practically speaking, uh, like I did, like a a 
I did a 10 out of 10, like dive. Right. And I, I felt in looking at the other actors out there that they did like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sure. the, the triple uh, Lutz to, you know, quad flip, backflip and stuck those landings. Sure. So I could do like a perfect, perfect dive as Tommy. Right. <laughs> um, and, but I felt like, uh, uh, and uh, yes, I feel like that, that, that I, I have no question that I uh, can enjoy that company without feeling embarrassed about it. Good. But I felt like uh, uh, I felt Logan was extraordinary and deserved it. But I also mm-hmm. thought Troy and Shannon did. I thought, you know, like everybody yeah. up there had put in uh, the, the, the time and the effort to, to be there. Uh, and I thought that the end result was a very just result. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I was like, literally all of them. Because it's, it's fun when you have like a favorite, which clearly I did, Jeffrey. I'm not going <laughs> to say who it was. <laughs> but I was like, but at the same time, it's like when you have the nominees that are all of a caliber, you're like, there's no losing here. They're so good across the board. It's wild. Well, it's subjective too. Like That's uh, true. <laughs> just, just within the last of us part two, how do you compare what Troy did to what Shannon did? How do I decide yeah. that one yeah, of those true. is better than the other, just in a, in a small bubble? Like, I, it, th- there's no way to say, well, you know, on a fair scale, this be sure, yeah. <laughs> outmastered. This Actually, like, they just both like you know did their thing and did it beautifully. And what more, you know, how can you just say that one is more appealing than the other, or more difficult than the other, and better executed? I have no idea. Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. It's beautiful. That's what it is. And it, yeah. it's no. I, your your work you've become one of my favorite actors i'll just say that i feel like we're comfortable (laughs) enough because i loved like lived in nuanced performance i don't know why Mm. i just really connect with it and like yeah all your new reels and clips you're putting in like everything you do is like it's there and tommy is one of those like i immediately connected from the first game i was like this is Mm. my guy so then when the second game rolled around i spent the whole time stressed out the whole time. I was like, is he okay? <laughs> Just tell me he's all right. Because we left him in not a good place. And then I have to play the whole second game, which I thoroughly enjoyed. thought the game was yeah. incredible. But yeah. in the back of my mind is like, is Tommy okay? I just want him to be okay. Joel isn't. So please keep, I just want to keep Tommy, please. And then they I shoot you in the back. Just- I, I'm sure, sure there were iterations that I uh, feel pretty certain that, that it that, that, that in some sort of conceptual meetings, Tommy definitely died. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know that for certain. Um, yeah. I, I think that uh, one of the best things about the storytelling is the willingness to take the risk with those characters. Yeah, absolutely. Or willing to say, look, look, this can happen to anybody. It can happen to Joel. Yeah. It can happen to anybody. Um, and, and so I like that sort of tension as an audience member, and I obviously like it as as a, a, a writer too. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's important. It's an important way to look at the world. Like we I walk so. around feeling immortal all the time, and like well, tomorrow is not promised yeah. in any way, shape, or form. Just because it feels True. like normally you wouldn't die tomorrow doesn't right. mean that you won't. You're right. I You're promise right. you, everybody who died today did not think today was going to be the day. <laughs> true, true. And consequences are a thing. That's something they people are, forget. Yes. Circle that's, back. Yes. That's, that, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what Last of Us 2 is. It's like, oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, yeah. what hap- that's what happens. That's what happens. That's my guy, but that's what happens. <sighs> yeah. Like, you, get what, you get what you pay for. Or yeah. you pay for what you, you know, you yeah. pay for what you got. <laughs> Hopefully not that way. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Golf club, yeah. I got accidentally hit in the head with a golf club one time. It was not a pleasant experience. (laughs) Don't recommend it. No, no, no. (laughs) We we used to go down like uh, I'm not a golfer. I've never been. uh, I'm a terrible golfer. Mm. But uh, we they had a public course at Haynes Point. They still do in D.C. Mm -hmm. And none of my friends were golfers either. But mm-hmm. you could go down and you could rent a golf cart. And there you could you, rent hey, bags that's the fun. <laughs> that counts. So we would go out and just just run roughshod over that poor golf course. And and not yeah. understanding the etiquette of golf, I stood behind my buddy uh, Jojo when he was trying to <laughs> trying to tee off for the first time ever. And that oh, driver no. came around and spit behind him. Oh, no. It hit me in the temple, and I remember watching <laughs> my baseball cap. Like, I, I heard it hit, and then just, like, my baseball cap flying in slow motion. 
through the air far far away and landing and then i could hear again immediately <laughs> after that it was a yeah so so i i feel joel's pain and right i, I recognize that first <laughs> strike of the uh the uh the golf club and and uh and pity the man <laughs> oh my god speaking of characters that care so i played both of the games with my wife we'd never played them before we're like let's just go through this together and like when one died you'd pass the controller over and so <laughs> we got pretty attached to people and yeah in you know one of the craziest scenes ever where you guys get caught when you get knocked out i remember because mm. it's not a quick like one hit type of thing it's like a three hit thing and by the second yeah. my wife was like jesus christ leave him alone <laughs> it's like i know i know i feel Tell the same her i appreciate that yeah it's you you got her good you got her good uh, tommy it's, is is a is a i had auditioned for joel initially oh okay that makes sense and uh and and played obviously played uh it differently than when neil called up and said do you want to come do tommy sure um uh, because they're, they're related, but uh, Tommy is very different. So like, yeah, for sure. Uh, bringing the sort of, the sort of sense of humor that he has to the mm -hmm. table uh, and his sort of his own, his own sort of tortured journey, but his, his coming to, uh, to terms with it. Um, and in some ways covering it with his own sense of naivete or his desire to have a, uh, uh, some of his innocence back yeah is i think what makes him appealing yeah um and so when he sort of breaks after joel's death i think that makes it uh uh makes him more sort of uh uh brings the the audience uh, i think closer to him because of that he's not this hard ass you right know, cynic uh sure he's tried to start anew so when that breaks i think that the the creation there uh, what what Neil and Hallie got there was was a really interesting thing that brings him to the farmhouse. Um, yeah, you know the the he's still hoping that she'll do this for him without yeah. recognizing the consequences that she's the price she'll have to pay if and when she says yes. Yeah, beautiful scene. You, oh, li little, little things you do like tiny. I'm like dissecting performances these days. I'm like oh, mm. taking notes. And it's yeah. just tiny little things, the way you're moving, the way that you deliver a line that just nods. Like the thing I think I connect with Tommy the most is like, he's all heart, you know, yeah. it's very like here. And then like, when it happens, he's like, all right, just give me till the morning. And then Tommy's off. And you're like, that's his brother. Like, what's he going to do? You know, he's not yeah. like Joel life got to Joel and he's like, I'm going to be harder than this world. And he is where Tommy is like, I'm going to build a life. It's going to be cool here. But also that really sucked. And I was a part of that. So. I'm going to go get her and you got to move on, but I didn't because now you're mm. blind in an eye and you've got a limp. Now you're like every day you wake up and you, that's a very different reality. So of course he would go to the farmhouse and be like, Hey, I understand like everything's cool here for you, but like, look at things are yeah. not cool here. I have a daily reminder of it. And it's just gorgeous really, storytelling. The, yeah. It's like the compulsion is still driving him, but there's nothing that he can do about it. Yeah. Um, it's an it interesting sucks. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautifully <laughs> tragic sort of place to put him. Uh, was, somebody was mentioned the other day that uh, part of the, you know, as a as a writer, what you can do for a character is make their strength into their weakness. Um, and uh, and the comparison that she made was if you put uh, if you put Othello in Hamlet. He's just oh. going to go and, and kill his uncle. Like, yeah. <laughs> plays yeah. over. Done. It's a short story. <laughs> My uncle did what? Boom. Done. Handled. Uh, yeah. If you put uh, Hamlet in Othello, he figures out everything yeah. that's going on and he can tell Iago's lying to him. Sure. But because he's like a philosopher and like trying to sort of work through his process mm -hmm. in Hamlet, he's stuck. He's a man without action. He's stuck yep. in his head. Yep. Uh, whereas Othello is a man of action who is entrapped by Iago because of it. Mm -hmm. So when you take your character and make, when you take Tommy, whose strength is, you know, in action and in his ability just to get things done and get the, you know, work to get Jackson running again and get the, 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 uh, the, the generator fixed and running. Like mm -hmm. he is a man of get it done, get it done, get it done. This is the way that I hold on to my humanity. 
right? Uh, you break him in such a way that he cannot get it done anymore. And that's yeah. what, you know, oh, they did ow. beautifully. Uh, and so he's le- at his own sort of end point when he has to go and ask Ellie to do this thing, because if he doesn't ask her, it's not going to get done. And so that click will never come for him. Yeah. Ouch. It's a, yeah. <laughs> that's the good stuff though that's the kind of stories you want to tell that like hit that human side of you where it connects you know yeah. get a, a reaction like that's that's good stuff that's yeah good stuff <laughs> you, when did when did they tell you like because you did the first game years ago and then the second yeah. game how long was it before they're like hey we're coming back for a second one tommy's gonna be pretty up in the front just so you know um uh a long time ago i i 2014 i had lunch with neil and he's like this is the game we're gonna do it's wow. uh, like when the then, first one came out <laughs> well, yeah well and then they went and did uh uncharted three like it oh. was like got a little <laughs> sidetracked there hold on <laughs> uh but he basically pitched the entire thing to me uh over over lunch was like this is the whole sort of journey from you know we went back to we had lunch and then we went back to naughty dog he's like this is what we have in mind and you know i'd love to yeah. for you to, to come back and play tommy again in it and uh and even to the point where he knew what he knew how bad it was they, how painful the reaction the audience oh. uh, would be <laughs> good man uh but he knew that he wanted uh he wanted to be, he, wa- he, he talked about the entire end sequence uh, in the water uh, where they're really? trying in Santa Barbara, where they're trying, she's trying to kill her and has, he's like, I want it to be such that you, by the end of that fight, you give up yourself because you can't take the life out of her because she's a person to you now. Right. Um, that the revenge has become a hollow thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and when I played the game, I was like, he did what he said he was going to do. Yeah. And to be wow. able to, in a creative space, say this is what's going to happen and spend the, you know, Sony's money to make that happen mm-hmm. and not have anybody get in the way of that. Oh, is yeah. Just masterful use of your resources as uh, uh, an artist. Yeah. Um, I read an interesting article yesterday about the guy who wrote, uh, the the batman versus superman and and justice league i've never i've yeah. not seen either of the original cuts and i've watched, not watched the snyder cut it's not you know mm-hmm. it's not at the top of my list of things to do sure um, you're a little busy <laughs> yeah um four hours four hours yeah is it worth four it's a few days but, but the 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 takeaway was that he the, as a writer was so upset by the studio taking away and ruin his his work Story. yeah you know he wanted his name off the movie and it was a real drama and all the choices behind the scenes were being made by executives who were desperate to figure out how to make uh, as much mm. money as possible off the movie of not make the best story not have the most nuance not have the best script but how do we keep this under two hours and uh right. you know you know let's Market. cut all of cyborg out of it like yeah uh, and so you come to realize that what Neil and company and Naughty Dog accomplished is in the scope of like a triple A experience or a massive feature film is yeah. almost impossible to do without real interference uh, from the outside. And so sure. to be able to be in something that has that sort of creative leeway, uh, I recognize how rare that is and, 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 and feel honored by the experience and, and, and honored that he would share it with me back then uh, sure, uh, and trust me to keep my mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> and then come through like and deliver a creative vehicle that was even in its uh, infancy brilliant, but became something even bigger and better and, and, and more powerful in its ultimate experience. Um, yeah. It is a, incredibly rare. I don't know that, you know, between, you know, we talked about Big Apple. That was that same sort of experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the Last of Us and Last of Us Part Two were that sort of experience. In the 140, 150 things that I've done in the past 22 years, those are the only two that I can say were perfect creative experiences and not because of me <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> but they were perfect creative experiences that i was fortunate enough to be part of and you just realize that's rare sure 
there is something beautiful about that, that when an artist doesn't have to compromise on their vision, it's yeah. really, really special. And it's successful in whatever yeah. sort of form it was supposed to be. in. Yeah. Um, and Naughty Dog has never not delivered a successful financial, uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, success for Sony. So they trust them. So that's, yeah. you know, where the, they have faith because that faith has been earned. Right. Right. Um, and so that is, uh, uh, you know, I think that that is an important part of the process. But, you know, Batman and Superman are pretty successful things. They could have yeah. just made it alone and <laughs> yeah. seen what happened, you know? I agree. Uh, I agree. And I'll even attribute the success of these things and these creative visions to the people who help bring them to life. So I would even argue it's that good because you're a part of it, Jeffrey. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Yeah, 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 nah, you know, <laughs> I didn't say you had to take it. I said, I'm going to give it to you, you know? <laughs> Thank you. But, but, but no. No, I, I'm uh, I'm learning that as an actor, you have to bring yourself to the role. All right. So if somebody else did it, if you did Joel, would have been different. If yeah. somebody oh, else yeah. had done Tommy, would have been different. And I really yeah. like Tommy. So thank you. I, I I cannot wait to see. I mean, like I think Pedro Pascal is an incredible choice. Right. That girl Bella. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be great. Like first time. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great. I can't wait to see who they get for Tommy. I think that's yeah. Gonna be- uh, I know it's a tough needle to thread. They need something specific. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'm excited to see what the new process of that yeah. is and what the the uh, what sort of intangibles that guy or girl. I, yeah, I, I, who knows? I told Neil's. I was like, Neil, Aunt Tommy would be amazing. And then yeah. I would never be, you know, never, I wouldn't, if it was a woman, I'd never feel sad that I didn't get to play it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Can't compare. Can't compare. Sorry. Uh, nope, do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it is. A, I'm excited to see what they, what they come up with and how that sort of Same. dynamic works and unfolds and how they tell that story from a new point of view. I mean, it's absolutely, it is, uh, it's going to be different. Cool. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm so, I'm so excited. A reimagining because it's going to be yeah. different and I, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, dude, we've been talking for an hour already. It has been a pleasure. We did uh, it, again. Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> this was a blast. I I yeah. love talking to you. You're good. You're a good dude, Jeffrey. Well, uh, thank you. Well, I will. Uh, I'll make sure that you get a copy of uh, of the second book once I get the final galleys back, and then we'll come talk again sometime in June. Hell yeah! Let me know. Also, before I let you go, I got to ask: Where can people find you online? Where can they find your book? Talk to me. Uh, at Pierce underscore Jeffrey on Twitter is a great place. Not bad. Uh, the, Not bad. the book is uh, The Reckoning, book one, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Anointed Angel Comes. Uh, Jeffrey Pierce, at, uh, thank you. The second one is called <laughs> Second Coming. Um, Nailed it. Uh, and and uh, that is, uh, it's at Amazon, it's at uh, Goodreads, it's at Barnes and Noble, uh, all places online. Beautiful. Um, yeah. And uh, and we are going to, I have some uh, labor to put in, but we are going to do a Kindle version of book one oh, cool. with, with all color uh, oh. chapter art. Uh, the current version is all black and white, but I mm-hmm. realized that we can do a separate version with all colors. So there will be a, uh, uh, some sort of 99 cent deal for a version of the Kindle with all color uh, to, in advance of book two coming out. Nice. See, killing it. See, even amidst yeah. all this, you figured it out. I knew you could. Well, I knew you could. Maybe. <laughs> so like 50 books, it's going to be right. great. <laughs> and even then, we'll see. We'll see. Let's not get into ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, maybe. Maybe you'll give away 50 books. That's right. That's right. You'll have 50 books at yeah, some there point. There will be 50 books in a box in your garage. Do That's what you right. will with them. They're there. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com, 
There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.